Welcome to Affordable Fuel Injection's instructional video for a Clark baggage tractor. This video will demonstrate the basic procedures of installing an electronic fuel injection system on the machine. This includes taking off the old parts and putting on the new. Additionally, how to hook up the wiring harness will be presented. Please enjoy this presentation. The first step is to remove the carburetor, the old adapter plate, and the old restrictor plate. Additionally, you want to remove the studs as new ones will be installed. Next, you will install the new governor, the throttle plate, and throttle body. Make sure that the gaskets are placed in between the parts and that the studs are securely fastened. So that the throttle cable aligns with the cam linkage, some fabrication may be involved on the bracket. It may, as in this case, need to be raised and shifted over to be aligned. As the procedure continues, the fuel lines need to be installed. The side to the right, with the fuel cup, is the return line. The opposite side is the input. It's important to keep these fuel lines away from the hot manifold. The stock fuel pump is to be removed and a block off plate is to be fastened on. This is due to an external fuel pump that will be installed. <laughs> to start with the wiring harness, a hole must be drilled through the firewall. This is because the ECM will be placed under the dash. The hole needs to be one and a half inches in diameter to fit the harness through. After the hole is drilled, you can feed the wiring harness through starting on the end with all the connectors. Notice how the harness is not pushed all the way through. To install the ECM, remove the front part of the dash. To make installation easier, adhesive strips should be already placed on the ECM. Go ahead and place it underneath the top part of the dash. After the ECM is placed, go ahead and attach the wiring harness to it, matching the corresponding connectors. Next is the check engine light. After drilling a half inch hole into the dash, you can place the check engine light in. The check engine light has two wires coming out of it. One of these gets hooked to 12 volts. The other wire gets connected to the wire coming out of the wiring harness marked check engine light. Your tack filter can be zip tied to the surrounding wires underneath the dash to avoid clutter. These here are the connectors of the wiring harness. All should be labeled to where they go for fast, efficient installation. After taking out the stock coolant temperature or plug, you'll want to install ours then fasten the connector like so. For the oxygen sensor, a bung will need to be welded onto the exhaust pipe. First, a 7 8 inch or 1 inch hole is to be drilled into the exhaust pipe. Then the O2 sensor can be placed in. The MAP sensor too will require hole drilling into the firewall. These holes are to be small, so screws can fasten the sensor. After locking it down, go ahead and snap the connector in place. As for the wire labeled crank signal, this is to be affixed to the starter side of the solenoid. Make sure that the battery is not attached. Afterwards, you may attach the battery wire on the wiring harness. Unlike what is shown in the video, it is best to hook up this wire directly to the positive side of the battery. The wire labeled fuel pump positive is to be fixed to the positive end of the fuel pump. Next, the ground wire of the fuel pump can be attached to the engine block ground, which is located right under the alternator. The 12 volt ignition wire is to be secured onto the key switch on the run side. It is very important to know that this wire needs to have 12 volts at all times, even while cranking. The following is in regards to the throttle body. The two pin injector wire 
clips into the injector at the top. The 4-pin IEC and the 3-pin TPS connectors can also be as fixed as well as you note their locations. Continuing with the process, the vacuum lines need to be installed. The vacuum advanced distributor hose gets plugged into the backside of the governor. Take one of the lines on the throttle body and attach this to the constant vacuum of the governor. Then you'll plug off the other vacuum lines coming out of the throttle body. After everything is installed, the final step is attaching the air cleaner. Set the adapter onto the throttle body and slide the air cleaner into place. Fasten tightly. After this is accomplished, you can go ahead and hook up the battery lines again. Then you can be ready to go. But before you go ahead and start it up, you want to turn the ignition on and off a few times so as to prime the fuel pump. Then after that is done, go ahead and fire up that engine. You'll notice that it starts easier and that it runs more efficiently. As for all at Affordable Fuel Injection, we want to thank you for choosing us.